Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corlick from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and welcome to Playload. This is all my video game pickups for the month of January 2023. Actually, that's not true. There's a whole bunch of Japanese stuff that's going to get its own video, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, before we do any of this, though, if you guys could do me a favor, please like this video, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't done that before, uh, as well as check me out on the social media stuff in the description. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, etc. I appreciate the support, especially on Twitter and Instagram, guys. Please go over there, check that out. Facebook fan page, if you guys still use Facebook. I appreciate all that. Thank you very much. Uh, now, yeah, we're going to talk video game pickup. So this was a weird month for me because uh, except for the last few days, I was actually not even on this continent for like the majority of the month. I, on New Year's Eve, I actually flew out to Japan uh, and I was out there as well as Guam, Tinian, Saipan. I was in that whole part of the world for like three and a half weeks. Um, so everything here is either stuff that came back from that or showed up in the mail while I was gone. Um, and that means there is going to be a Japanese pickups video. I wasn't in Japan as long as I was back in November, um, slash October, whatever. Yeah, October, November. So there won't, it's only going to be one video, but uh, stay tuned for that. So everything here is from that adventure, and there's just a couple of Japanese pickups in here that just didn't wouldn't have made sense to put in that video. So the first pile we're going to start with here uh, of things is actually really... At none of this really is video game related, I'm be totally honest. It's just kind of neat stuff that I thought somebody out there might get a kick out of. Um, the first one up is just anybody who's into technology. I thought this was pretty cool. So when I went out there, uh, I always bring power banks. Um, and I brought four. Because I've noticed when you wander around Japan, I've talked about this on my travel channel, which, by the way, all this adventure stuff I'm describing will appear over there. You should go check that out. There's also a lot of Japanese videos over there. I just finished that playlist. It's like 10 videos. Uh, there's more coming. You should really go check that out. You get to see all this stuff firsthand, not just hear me talk about bits of it later. Um, but when I go to Japan, I've noticed that my phone's battery always dies like really, really fast compared to other countries, especially within the US. Part of that has to do with the fact that you're looking at it more often, but also that it's constantly trying to get cell service, which is not as good in Japan. It's fine, it's not bad. It's just that it needs to try a little harder to connect. That's all I'm saying. So I always bring power banks, but I screwed up and I forgot the power cable necessary for that to work. Um, so while I was there, I was hanging out with this guy, Joseph, who's a member in my Discord. He goes by Joseph Hardoff Destroyer, because if you watch Japanese videos, he's he's constantly going to Hardoffs, which is a great, great store. Um, and you could, if you ever, you know, curious about finding something at a Hardoff, like, check the Discord. There's a link in the description again to that. He's in there. He'll, he can help you out with being like, all right, yes, I did see that, or I didn't see that, or whatever. Anyway, so I'm hanging with him, uh, and he's a random guy I met in a parking lot once. <laughs> like, I'm walking down the street, and he just noticed me. He's like, are you Adam Corley? I was like, yeah. So we just started hanging out. Like, that's it's that easy. Um, but anyway, so we're hanging out on this trip, and he had brought a new power bank, and he was just like, yeah, this thing's great. And I was looking at him like, yes, this is great. I want one. How do I get one? He's like, well, I'll order one on Amazon Japan, and I'll see you in a few days, and when I see you again, I'll just bring it. And I was like, perfect. So I bought this. This is not, I know it sounds almost like a sponsored thing. It's not. I, I, I bought this. I just thought it was really cool. But it's a power bank that has uh, 40,800 milli milliampere hours. Uh, in other words, it's a big battery. Um, but inside, it has like a special little pouch you can take it with. It's got two charging cables, whatever. What's cool about it, it's got three additional features. So in addition to being like this big, bulking uh, battery, it's got these four like extensions. So it's got built-in USB-C, which is what I need. It has iPhone, which I don't care about. It's got uh, USB micro, and it has standard USB, although it looks a little funky, but that is standard USB. Um, so it has that. It also has the actual ports in case you want to use your own cable. You can, of course, charge it that way through those ports. Uh, so it's got uh, USB micro in. It has USB A and uh, C out. Um, actually, no, sorry. It's, it's USB-C in to charge. Uh, USB micro in to charge, USB A out to charge, but also has its actual like built in ports. That, that's all cool. It also has a wireless char charging pad, so I just put my phone on it, it'll charge, that's great. But the thing that really sold me on this is this side. Uh, this is a solar panel. You just stick this in the sun and it starts charging. 
Uh, it's really quite neat. Uh, I was like, what? Really? And yeah, so it, uh, I even like read the manual. The manual's in Japanese, but like I was translating it through my phone. And basically they were saying like, within proper lighting conditions, it only takes a few hours to charge all the way up. Granted, you can charge it by just sticking it into an outlet or whatever, but you don't have to. Power button on the side. So I don't usually buy stuff like this. Usually I get power banks as like free little promo things like from companies or whatever. But this is like a really good one. And I was like, this will solve all my problems forever on that. So, yeah. I don't... The thing was, I actually actively tried to look for this on Amazon US. Because I thought, oh, okay, I'll just buy it, you know, here and ship it to myself. And then I'll just have it that way. But we couldn't find it that way. We could only find it through Amazon Japan. So, I don't know how you're going to go about buying one, potentially. But I want you to know it exists by a company called Delhi 2. Pretty sure it's a Chinese company, to be honest. I don't think it's actually Japanese made, but whatever. There you go. I thought that was neat. Um, next up, on the way back, for whatever reason, United Airlines upgraded me to first class, which is cool. They didn't have to do that, but they also gave me a pair of pajamas. I didn't even open them. I just thought that was really weird. It's, it's pajama shirt and pajama pants. I don't know. That's it. <laughs> Next up, uh, so this this requires a little bit of a story because I don't really know what this is. Um, so here's what happened. There's another guy on my Discord. His name is Oliver. He lives out in Kyoto, which is the Kansai area of Japan. Uh, another guy on my Discord named Sunshine, who lives in Washington, D.C., but he was taking a trip out to Japan. Uh, he was in Tokyo. And I was down in Guam. And we all agreed, hey, on January 13th, we should all meet up. The most neutral location was Nagoya, Japan. So on this one day, and you'll see this adventure on the Travel Channel, Oliver goes north <laughs> from Kyoto up to Nagoya. Uh, Sunshine goes south from Tokyo to Nagoya. And I fly very north from Guam to Nagoya. And then we all met up and we all had dinner together. We actually went to one of those like high-end yaki niku places, like where they do like the the really fancy beef and all that. So like one of those ones that's like supposed to be like ludicrously expensive. And the thing is, if that was in uh, Kansai area down in Kyoto or Osaka or Tokyo on the northern side, it would have been expensive. But Nagoya, nobody goes to Nagoya. Uh, the only people who are in Nagoya are like people who actually like live in Nagoya. Uh, tourists never really go there. Um, in fact, there's no flights from North America to Nagoya. I think Delta had the last one and they just canceled it. The only way I was able to get there is I was going from Guam, which United Airlines actually operates, but they only do it from Guam because they're just doing it for the Japanese who live in Nagoya who want to visit Guam. I happen to just be taking advantage of that route existing. Anyway, that doesn't matter. So we went out to dinner, went to this fancy place, and they handed me this thing and I, we, they gave one to each of us. Now, I asked Oliver, is this like normal? Do you go to a place like this? And he's like, no. Uh, the guy straight up said it was a gift. He told Oliver in Japanese it was a gift. And he, we noticed he hadn't been giving it to anyone else. And we were like, okay, what's that about? And then Oliver's like, it's because we're gaijin. It's, you know, we're not Japanese. So he, they never really see us. So I think this was their way of being, oh, wow, thanks for coming to Nagoya. We can't believe you showed up here. So that was cool. So inside, I had already opened this once and I was just like trying to figure out like what it was. Um, to tell you the truth, I don't really know, but I'll, I'll show you guys. It's some sort of like orange banner thing. And I, I don't know its purpose. It came with this little card, which I can't read, piece of paper kind of, you know, uh, enfolding it, you know, enveloping it here. And then there's this, just this thing, uh, which just has like, I mean, look at it. I don't entirely know what the point of this is. I think it's just something you would kind of hang off somewhere. But uh, yeah, they certainly didn't have to do that, but they did. And obviously not video game related, but it's just a cool thing about Japan is that stuff like that will just kind of happen. And I just thought you guys would get kind of a kick out of that. So there you go. Um, next up, we got some nerdery type of things here. Uh, speaking of like clothing and all that, I actually got this shirt. This is a Godzilla shirt that I got at the Godzilla store. I think it's a sweet design, by the way. You'll probably see this shirt regularly for a little bit. Um, but speaking of Godzilla, uh, while I was down there, if you guys were veterans of this channel and you've watched a lot of the pickups, you've probably heard this story about the heart off at the top of the mountain or the book off at the top of the mountain. So like five years ago, uh, I... I was down in the Yokosuka area, which is like a little peninsula south of Tokyo. And at the time, I was staying with a buddy of mine, his name is Fox, and he had the day off and we both wanted to go check out a store. We had kind of checked out all the easier ones and then we found Google Maps said like, hey, there's a store over here. 
I had it came up as a hard off, but it turns out what it is is a Wattman's. But at the time, I really didn't know the difference. Um, Wattman's is just like another used thrift store type of place, right? So I was like, okay, let's go there. But my buddy was like, well, you can take the train to a certain point, but once you get there, we're gonna be walking. I was used to the walking. What I didn't know is you're gonna be walking up a mountain. And once you get up this mountainside, you into this little valley town, and in there, there's the Wattmans, right? And it was a brutally painful walk because I'm out of shape. <laughs> but anyway, we did it. And I ended up getting so much great stuff because like it was a store that you know tourists never go to. And so it's been five years. I was the one time I ever went. And on this trip, the guy Sunshine who I was talking about said, I want to go to that store that you did. And I said, okay, but A, the walk sucks, and B, obviously I can't guarantee what kind of stuff's going to be in there. You know what I mean? It's been five years. You know, a lot, the sad truth is a lot of the stores have really changed. Like the inventory is nowhere near as good as it used to be. So I was like, just setting yourself up for possible huge fail here. And he's like, I, I, I know that going in. He's like, more like, I just want the adventure, right? Okay, so he ends up going a completely different route than I did. So the walk for him was nowhere near as bad. I guess he took a different entry point because he was coming in from Yokohama as opposed to coming in from... No, no, sorry. He came in from Yokosuka as well. He just took a different train line because I think they updated it a bit. Like, I honestly don't know exactly how he ended up there versus I did. But I, I, he basically said, like, the walk really wasn't that bad. Then again, he's in better shape. So maybe our definition of a mountain was different. I don't know. But he ended up going to the store and not finding much of anything, which is unfortunate. But he still wanted that, like, I'm going to climb a mountain thing. I don't know. That was just what he was doing. And you can, again, you'll be able to see all of this on the Travel Channel. While he was doing that, I was actually at the U.S. base uh, in Yokosuka, the, the American side, which we'll talk about in a second. But uh, while he was up there, he just like, one of the coolest things about Japan is just Godzilla just randomly appears. And I don't mean that as a joke. It actually happens. Like, they were walking, and there was this, or he was walking, I should say. And there was just, like, this big Godzilla statue. And it turns out it was, like, part of a playground where kids could play or something like that. But uh, right around there, I guess they were giving out these, like, Godzilla posters, which was pretty cool. <laughs> so he just grabbed a couple. I don't need these, but, you know, it was nice of him to do. I like Godzilla, obviously, hence the shirt. Um, but while he was doing that, as I said, I was down at the U.S. base. So I've been to the Yokosuka area a ton of times. Uh, it's where Shenmue takes place, my favorite video game of all time. Um, and so I like going to that area. It's also, you know, an interesting area, very tourist compa you know, compatible area. And it's an area I can go to where I'm not tempted to spend a lot of money, which is always nice. Um, one of the cool things about that, though, as a Shenmue fan or a video game fan in this case, is that the city of Yokosuka embraces the fact that Shenmue took place there. Uh, so you can actually go into these like little tourist like you know uh, hole in the wall areas like tourist guide areas, and they actually have like all sorts of maps and things about the city of Yokosuka, and they always have these Shenmue specific maps. So I already have all of these, but uh, I went and I thought I'd grab a couple more in case I came back here and anybody in the Shenmue community wanted any. So here we go. These are the um, the two. They have new ones. These are the ones based on the Shenmue anime. These are kind of the, I'm not going to say they're rare because they are a free thing they give away in bulk. It's just that you have to actually go there to get them. Um, so they, you know, were giving these out. And what's funny is they only did these in Japanese. There is no English version of this. Uh, so I walk in there and I just saw them immediately. So I just grabbed a couple. And I said, you know, is it okay? They speak English in those little rooms, especially in Yokosuka, because that base, that area is very, very American. So I was like, can I take a couple of these? And they're like, yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, and so I did, and they're like, hang on, uh, do you want English ones? And I didn't, I was like, oh, yeah, sure. Because for a second, I thought, oh, wow, did they make English versions of the anime one? They did not. Uh, they just came out and handed me the, the standard one. There's, there's a bunch, they have a few different covers. This is, they'll all, the Japanese will always try to do this for you. They'll just come out and be like, oh, here, take the English version. You don't have to take the Japanese one. It's like, I actually want this one specifically because it's, it's fine. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. So anyway, we got a couple more of these. So I will probably give these away to Shenmue fans. That's really the only reason I grabbed them. But just also, if you are a Shenmue fan, just know that the city of Yokosuka still embraces and cares about the fact that Shenmue took place there. So that's cool. Next up, uh, while I was in Guam, I was hanging out with a buddy of mine named Brian. Uh, now, he's a local uh, of Guam. I've hung out with him many times. He's a big fan of this channel. And while we're wandering around, you know, just doing stuff, um, he mentions again that he's in a band. Now, you got to understand, I don't know much about music, like famously, like movies I can talk about, video games I can talk about, history I can talk about, travel. I can talk. You bring up music and I just, 
and, and Joseph, actually the guy I was talking about Battery Bank before, he's like, it's interesting trying to talk to you about music because when the subject comes up, you just stop. It's like you just shut down and you vanish. And it's true because I have no way to contribute to that conversation. I, I'm not good with music. I can name like five bands ever. Music has never really meant a whole lot to me. It's not that I dislike it. It's more like I'm totally indifferent to it. You know what I mean? I, he, so it's funny. That's the great. He's, <laughs> I talk a lot. As you notice in my videos, Joseph Stern said, he's like, you ever want to shut Adam up? Just start talking about music and he will go dead silent. So, that's a great way to segue into the fact that Brian actually has a band. Um, and his band is called Fat Tofu. See, that's a band I can name. Um, so, Brian, he, knew, he knows this about me. He knows that I'm not like a big music guy, but he still wanted to basically celebrate his band. So, he actually gave this to me. Um, this is a uh, vinyl record of an album they made called uh, Heart Eater. Uh, they only did 300 physical copies. There's also It also includes a uh, downloadable copy for free within there. Um, and I obviously haven't listened to it yet because it's still sealed up. But first of all, I just celebrate the fact that my buddy actually made an album and that he got it physically produced and released. So you can actually, I think you can buy this. If not, unless you can certainly get the digital one. Look up Fat Tofu. That's again the band. I don't know exactly where because, I, again, I don't... Spotify? Is that still a thing? I don't, I know I'm not trying to joke with you guys. Like, I really don't know music. I'm not kidding. Like, I don't get it. I don't know where, where do you find music? I don't know. I, it's not my arena. But uh, Spotify, sure, maybe YouTube music. I genuinely don't know. Um, but anyway, I look up Fat Tofu probably through Google. I'm sure something will come up. But yeah, this is the physical edition of that. And I do like vinyl. I want that on record. I do actually genuinely like vinyl for scores and things that I already know. Like, I like a lot of video game scores. I like a lot of music scores, you know, et cetera. Most of my, it's funny, my girlfriend will play a game with me a lot where she's like, a song will come up that I have on like an iPod. Yes, I'm still using that. And she'll be like, how do you know this song? And it's never like, oh, this that song won a bunch of awards or won three Grammys and the artist did this and that. I never know that stuff. I was like, oh, that was in American Pie 2. <laughs> like, I'll just have a random movie reference to how I know a song, and that's why I like the song. That's how my brain is wired. I'm not wired to just like, oh, is this a good song or not? I, I genuinely can't do it. So I'm assuming this is good, but I, I do like listening to stuff like that on vinyl. So anyway, all of this is to say is my buddy Brian has a band called Fat Tofu. They made a physical vinyl album of an album called Heart Eater, which I think is really cool. And if you can check it out, you should. For if, if you have taste in music, this will probably mean a lot to you. To me, it means a lot to me just because my friend made it. Um, but yeah, and of course, it was actually made in Guam, which is pretty neat. So, that's it for random stuff. Let's get into some like actual video game stuff. Thank you very much to Brian for that. Um, now, we're going to talk a couple of Japanese pickups. Uh, like I said, there will be an entire Japan pickups video. Just one, because it wasn't nearly as chaotic as the last trip. Um, but yeah, so a couple of random things I got here. First up, I got the Sega uh, Mega Drive Tower Mini 2, as well as the Mega Drive Tower Mini 0. Uh, this might require an explanation. Um, so if you guys are familiar with the Sega Mega Drive or Sega Genesis Mini 1 and 2, I've actually got them back here. I've done videos on both of them. Sega actually sent me those for, for free for review purposes. Um, the thing is, in Japan, they actually made little plastic add-ons for the Sega CD, the 32X, etc. Um, and they sold them at retail. Technically, there is a North American edition of the Tower of Power, the plastic one right behind me. That's the Japanese one. Uh, but there is technically a North American one, but they only sent it to certain influencers. And even though I'm Sega's Bay, Google that term, I will come up, and they sent me the console for free for review, They even they were like, well, you're not enough on the list to get the, the plastic tower of power. <laughs> like, only truly upper echelon reviewers got those things. It was a very limited release. Um, so I didn't really care. I just was fine getting that. But they actually did the same thing for the Mega Drive Mini 2, which includes the Sega CD Model 2 variant, or Mega CD Model 2 variant, as well as it also comes with a couple of odd bonuses. It comes with uh, the cartridge of Virtual Racing, which I assume the reason they chose that is just because Virtual Racing was a unique shaped cartridge um, obviously, and it, they didn't want to do the 32X again, but in the event that you still had the Tower of Power 1, and you wanted to use the 32X, they actually thought of that. I joked, joked, in my Mega, or sorry, Sega Genesis Mini 2 review, because I put the 32X into it, and it was, like, unstable, 
And I was like, it's kind of hilarious because this thing would actually require the spacer to stay stable. This includes that spacer, so it actually fits physically in there and is nice. So that was pretty smart of them. Uh, this one got way less attention. This is the the, the Tower uh, Mega Drive Tower Mini Zero. This actually includes the Sega Master System Power Base Converter, uh, as well as a couple of fake carts. Now, it's got to be said, none of these are like, they don't do anything. This is toys. These are purely cosmetic. They go on a thing. It changes nothing about the performance of the device. You don't suddenly get access to new games or anything like that. It's just a little bonus pretty type of thing. Um, I wanted it because I just thought it was cool. Um, this one especially. This was just kind of a bonus. Um, but I, when I was there in Japan back in October and November, I couldn't find these anywhere. Um, Aldo, a.k.a. Thorhax of Japan, another guy in my Discord who lives there, was like, uh, I found them on Amazon. You want them? I'll ship them to myself, and then you can get them next time. I knew I was coming back, so yeah, no problem. Um, and I'm glad I did that because these are just not very common releases. I mean, the actual Mini 2 was barely, I mean, it barely came out compared to the Mini 1. So finding this superfluous add-on is even less common. So I'm not going to say it's like worth a lot of money. It certainly isn't, but it's still just neat. It also comes with a disc of Sonic CD. That's cool. But um, yeah, I'll go ahead and probably install those later. But very neat. Thank you, Aldo, for arranging that. Next up, speaking of somebody who arranged something for me, um, this is a book. It is still in a package. We're going to open this up in a second. Um, so what happened here is that I went to the place I always tell people never to go to. I went to Super Potato in Akihabara. Don't ever go there. Um, I went there because Sunshine, the guy I was talking about before, the Godzilla posters, he wanted to go there and just see it. And I always tell people, Super Potato is the store you go to when you know nothing about where you're supposed to buy video games in Japan. Everybody's heard of Super Potato. So they're like, oh, that's where I'm supposed to go, right? Okay, that's that's the place. Don't, don't go there, man. Um, so the problem with that place is that the prices are ludicrous. Like they are like, if they're not eBay, there's now sometimes above eBay. It's insane. And their inventory isn't even that good anymore. It's basically like a museum that where you can technically buy stuff in it. But a lot of the best stuff, the truly like, wow, how did you find that? They actually won't sell you. So it's just kind of a waste of your time. Um, yeah, Sunshine realized that pretty quick. Like he was not feeling too good after we came out of that place. But, to their credit, they did teach me about something. Um, so I'm walking around there and I'm looking through some just books. And I noticed they had something. I was like, that's really cool. It was a Sega Saturn Ultimate Guidebook that just kind of consisted of like artwork and the history of the Sega Saturn. Uh, it actually includes like lists of every Sega Saturn game ever released. And I was like, that's a pretty interesting, useful tool. But they wanted like 30 bucks for it, and I looked on Amazon Japan, and it was like 20 It was There was no reason to buy it. So I, I asked Joseph, again, the guy from before with the power bank, I was like, hey, since we're going to meet up, can you just order this, and I'll just pick it? Yeah, no problem. So he has it shipped from Amazon Japan to his house, and then here it is. I haven't even opened up the package yet, so let's, let's do that right now, um, and I can show you this book. And it turns out it's the wrong one. No, no, it's right. Uh, Sega Saturn Perfect Catalog. Now, if you guys saw, I did a video uh, that I included the Dreamcast version of this in. Um, it's it's just what I said. It's it's just look at this. It's just every like accessory, and it's just like history of the console, console variations. Like it's got the hot, look the GPS Saturn that I was talking about. Before, they got like inst extensive breakdowns of it with random photos and everything, and describing its history. And they've got artwork for it, and like yeah, it's it's really. If you're a Sega Saturn fan, there's like no way you shouldn't own this. Like, dude, it has the karaoke one. Oh yeah, did you even know that? There's a giant karaoke Sega Saturn. Yeah, they've got footage of that, dev kits, all sorts of stuff. And then of course, like all the games. Um, damn, there's so much stuff in this thing. Like it's gonna take me, I'm gonna really sit there and look at it. But um, not only do they include all the games, they include all the games in the, in the order in which they came out. There's like a little mini review of each one, what year they came out. Um, to be fair, this is, primarily, uh, if not entirely, yeah, this is only the Japanese ones, which makes sense. Um, in the Dreamcast case, there was a second book I showed you guys that actually included all the American and European releases. This is just the Japanese stuff, but to be fair, the European and American ones are the easier ones to get info on. This now has, like, not that I would, but if I ever, like, sat down and was like, I'm gonna do a full Japanese Sega Saturn set, this is my checklist. There's a bunch of these guys. They're called Perfect Catalogs. They exist for various systems. Dude, there's a PS2 one. 
It's so much content that it's two books. And that's just the Japanese stuff. It doesn't even include all the insane European exclusives and American exclusives and so on and so forth. But point is, if you're into these specific consoles and you want a lot of information on what came out, especially in Japan, look up the Perfect Console or Perfect Catalog series. They have them for a bunch of different systems. So thank you to Joseph for arranging that. Uh, now, on to packages. As you can see, we have a bunch of them here. So all this stuff just kind of showed up while I was gone, with one exception, which is this. This actually showed up on New Year's Eve. This showed up like, I was like, oh, I'm about to head to the airport. Oh, you got a package. Oh, uh, I don't have time to deal with this. I, like, <laughs> just put down, uh, I'm gonna go. So technically this arrived in December. I know what this is. I just didn't have time to do anything with it. Um, this comes from the UK. Uh, specifically from a company called Wave. So let me open it and show, well, I just broke the handle there, but uh, we should still be able to get into it relatively easily enough. There we go. Okay, there we go. No problem. Inside, yep, there it is. This is a Dreamcast demo disc by Wave. Uh, this is called the Dreamcast Indie Sampler Number 1, or Debug. Uh, smash through the first level of the acclaimed indie platformer Intrepid Izzy, which I've done entire videos on. Uh, take your Dreamcast line for the first time in 20 years with car, football game, driving strikes, and destroy countless alien civilizations in the arcade-inspired full 3D shooter Xenosider. So Xenosider I've done an entire video on. Uh, driving strikes I've never heard of. So it's a, it's a football or soccer game. Uh, and I guess it works online in this demo. That's pretty cool. So I don't know if that's getting a full release later. I guess we'll, we'll find out about that. But uh, very neat right there. Um, so huge shout out to Wave. Now here's the cool thing about Wave. Uh, having talked to them, I mentioned this before, but attention all British people and technically anybody in Europe who feels like visiting the UK, uh, or I guess that would really apply to anybody who feels like visiting the UK, but that would just be more geographically logical. Um, I will be attending a convention in April in Norwich, or Norwich, I apologize for the American, my filthy American accent on that. Um, but it's like, I'm told it's like an hour north of London. Um, I'll put it here, the big banner, look at that, oh, look at that, that's all this art of the event. Uh, OLL Gaming is putting it on. Um, so the thing is, I will be an American guest there, along with John Riggs. The two of us will be the Yanks from abroad who are going to be attending this retro video game convention. Uh, as I'm also understand it, there will be a lot of the you know British YouTubers. I'm not entirely certain which ones. Some of them do appear on the banner there. I have met a bunch of them in the past, but a bunch of us will all be there. And, you know, we can hang out, talk, you can meet us, photos, whatever. John and I are both very cool about stuff like that, if anybody cares. Um, the Sega Pluto will probably be there. They, it's funny, uh, when it comes to conventions, I don't always know, like, when they want it or not. Sometimes I get approached for, like, hey, we want you. Sometimes we get approached for, hey, we want the Pluto. Sometimes, hey, we want both. And in this case, they never even mentioned it. So I'll probably bring it of my own volition. Um, but... You know, you tell me if you're out there and you want to see the Pluto as well as me, I'm happy to bring it. I don't care. Um, plus, it'd be nice to add it, you know, to another country, I guess. But uh, yeah, regardless, we'll be going there. So huge shout out to the guys at Wave because they were directly responsible for, you know, communicating that and making that happen. And of course, they hooked us up with this Dreamcast demo disc. This is actually something I believe you can get for free on their website still. I'm not 100% on that anymore, but I know you could for, for a little while there. So this, this is very cool of them to send out. They just sent this to me without requesting it, which was nice of them to do. So huge shout out to them. Thank you. Um, but yeah, they've done a bunch of good games I've done videos on as well. Um, now we have some more packages here. This one, uh, again, something I did not order. This just kind of showed up while I was gone. I was not anticipating it. This comes from Retro Fighters, so I can guess what it is to a certain extent, but we have to get through the packaging here to find out. Sorry about the delay there. Uh, so what we have here is two controllers from Retro Fighters. These are the Battler GC wireless gamepad. They claim to be compatible with the GameCube, the Switch, the Wii, and the Wii U. Um, I did not know these were coming. As I said, Retro Fighters doesn't usually tell me this stuff. This stuff just kind of shows up. Um, so I'll probably make an entire video on these. So I don't think I'll talk too much about it here. Uh, but yeah, it says it's compatible with GameCube. The Game Boy Player, actually, they mentioned that specifically. Wii, Wii U, Switch, and PC. So USB charge, USB-C charging, etc. A wireless controller. So thank you to Retro Fighters, because as I said, I was not expecting this. But rather than focus too much on it right now, I say we just hold off, because I'll probably do a video on it. But uh, I'll put a link in the description to Retro Fighters if you want to check these out. Retro Fighters always makes really good stuff, so that's cool. Um, now, I, I did not know these were coming but I'm going to be honest, in anticipation for this video, when I saw it, because Retrofire, on the package, they, they put that it's from them. So I was like, oh, this is, I'm just going to 
just plug some little story here that I thought was funny. Um, when I was in Japan, I was wandering around with Sunshine, and we were waiting for uh, Thor Hacks of Japan to show up. We were all going to have dinner in Shinjuku. And as we're Sunshine and I are waiting around, we were just killing time going into like, you know, some Starbucks and then into like little stores and stuff like that. So we found this little store that I can really only describe as like a tiny Best Buy. So, you know, it sold modern things. Um, modern headphones, modern keyboards, you know, modern computer equipment, but also things like Switch games, PS5 games, etc. And uh, so we're just wandering around there just seeing what's good, seeing if there's anything interesting. And we get to this glass case. The glass case has a lot of keyboards and controllers and just random stuff. Now occasionally in there you would see a lot of strange peripherals and things like uh, Chinese controllers, I mean Chinese specifically, like Chinese brands I've never heard of that are making random third-party switch peripherals and like so on and so forth. Oddly, they occasionally had a couple of like indie Mega Drive games. It was strange. It was very strange. Um, but we go into this glass case and I noticed something immediately that I was like, I had to do a double take. And I took a photo of it and I even tweeted it out because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. They had this, the Retro Fighters Jab Gamepad. If you're like, what is that? This is Retro Fighters' first controller ever. Uh, this is an NES controller that's basically designed ergonomically as like a brawler type of controller. Um, they stopped production of this a long time ago. And I actually have one. I've shown it in videos before. I've never even seen the box for it until now. Um, but I saw it in there and I was like, wow, that's really odd. Now it's sun faded all, you know, incredibly badly. Like it should, the controller shouldn't appear to be blue and all that, it should be white. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, look how like the difference between the little like keychain and then the box art, like you can see how badly sun faded it really is. I remember I was just sitting there like stunned to see it. So I took a photo, I posted it via Twitter and they were stunned to see it too. They don't know how it got there. I have no idea how it got there. Um, but that was supposed to be the end of the story. But then a guy in my Discord who goes by the name Miriel Lucky Charms, he's from uh, Ireland, uh, he was like, I need that. What do I got to do? And so we cut a little deal, and so I picked it up for him. Um, so I'll be sending this out to him soon. But I just wanted to show you guys, like, where Retro Fighters started versus where it is now. I think this is kind of fascinating since we can actually visualize that. Uh, that and I just thought the story was fascinating because it... This wasn't a used store. Like, this shouldn't have been there. Like, there's still visible dust all over this box. Like, it was there for quite some time. Like, when I when I went to get it, I was like, uh, Kore Nishimas, which means, like, you know, can I get that? Um, and he was like, <laughs> he was a little surprised. Like, I wanted this thing because it had clearly been there forever. So, yeah. Anyway, very cool. Um, but, yeah, this isn't mine. I just wanted to share it with you. Next up, we have a package. This comes from Stone Age Gamer. Uh, full disclosure, Stone Age Gamer sent everything in this box for free for the purposes of review to me, so I uh, appreciate them doing that. I don't 100% know what's in here, so let's just go ahead and open it up and find out. I know some of the stuff, but they made it sound like they were just kind of throwing in things, and we'll just we'll just see what's good. Um, okay, I, um, okay, that's, okay. <laughs> well... First thing up here might be a tad awkward. I think they just sent me the, yeah, they sent me the Retro Fighters controllers as well. So I guess I'll have extras. It's, yeah, it's it's literally the exact same controllers that Retro Fighters themselves sent me. So cool, yeah, well, we'll, we'll do a video, we'll do a video. Uh, the Blade, oh, Blade GC and Battler GC. So I guess they're not just different colors. I'll have to look into that more, but yeah. Thank you to Stone Age Gamer and Retro Fighter. Um, there's more stuff here though. Uh, we have a second box. Okay, got that. Um, so we have several things here. Uh, first up, this is going to get its own video at some point because this is when they told me they had this, I was like, yeah, yes, give me that. Let's do this. This is a uh, USB. <laughs> Why? <laughs> this is a USB uh, adapter. I believe it even functions via Bluetooth controller adapter or the Philips CDI. Why not? At some point we're gonna have a CDI video that does uses Bluetooth controllers. I don't, we'll, we'll figure that out. Maybe these might even work because these work, they're, they're Bluetooth I believe and they, yeah, they are Bluetooth and they work via, they think, what is it? What they think is a PC. 
they might function on this. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But we'll, we'll get around to that at some point. Um, the other stuff they they included here, we got a couple of things, I believe. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what all of this is. Um, uh, yeah, there's that. And I, I don't know if this cable is... I think that... Yes, this cable would be for the CDI, so we'll leave that together. The other thing they gave me here is this. This is the uh, the Neo, what's it called? The Neo CD SD loader. Okay, this is an ODE for the Neo Geo CD. Uh, so basically, one of the infamous problems with the Neo Geo CD, if you guys saw my CDZ video I did back in December, uh, I was talking about the whole problem with the Neo Geo CD was its load times. Um, this basically repairs that. If you get rid of the disk drive, obviously, you can swap it out with an ODE that doesn't have that limitation and thus the console is pretty solid. You can put all the games on an SD card, etc. Yeah, you guys are familiar with ODEs. I've done videos on them in the past. These are really useful if you have a console with a dead disk drive uh, that you still want to get some use out of. Um, so I can't install this and I told them that, but we will, I know a guy who can and this will get done at some point. There will be a video about this eventually, but we gotta be a little patient on that one. But in the meantime, we've got things like controllers and the <laughs> CDI adapter to get through, so that'll be fun. Um, they also sent me this thing. It says, leave a review for a chance to win $300. Well, I, they sent this to me for free, so I don't think I'm actually eligible, but thank you very much. Um, and then there's just some paperwork about how to install it and all that kind of thing, so I won't worry too much about that. But yeah, huge shout out to Stone Age Gamer for sending that stuff. That was very nice of them to do. Stay tuned. There will be videos on that stuff later. So now we have two remaining packages. The first one up here, I have genuinely no idea what this is, so let's just start cutting into it. This comes from... Um, a guy in my Discord, again, you should join my Discord, there's a lot of cool people in there. Um, this comes from a guy in my Discord who goes by the name Lodmot. Now, canonically, within server lore, uh, Lodmot is the wealthiest known human being to ever exist. So, he's the guy, if anybody remembers this, he sent me this, like, big 8-track player and a custom 8-track uh, of the Shenmue score, and, like, and, here we go. Okay, this is already weird. Um, put that to the side. Yeah, he, most recently, he sent me this edition of Windows 95 for the Sega Genesis that he wrapped in strange custom paper just like this again uh, like this one features this it looks like I'm holding the Pluto and I'm taking it out for drinks um, he's got pictures of Peter Moore and Don Matrick together he's got this is so bizarre for some reason, Jimmy Butler screaming. He's an NBA player. There's some anime figure. Like the to truly get inside the mind of Lodmot would be terrifying. Happy holidays. Have an enjoyment, Lodmot. Have some Christmas pancakes from IHOP. Better cheddars. Being that rich makes you insane. Um, but anyway, oh, there's also Mickey Mouse with a beard, which I assume is a reference to me. Okay. Um, Let's just, I'm going to try to salvage this paper, but I don't, I don't know how much that's going to, oh, okay, we kinda, maybe we got it here. Inside, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I'm trying not to rip the paper, but that may not be avoidable. Okay. It is, actually, it's something surprisingly normal. Um, <laughs> this is Zero Tolerance Collection by Strictly Limited Games. Which includes a couple of postcards and it looks like a sticker. Yeah, for the PS4, this is zero tolerance. Man, I wasn't that a Sega Genesis game? At, at that front, don't I have that for Sega Genesis? Don't I? Don't I? Don't I? Don't I? Don't I? I'm looking over here. No, maybe I'm misremembering. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Sega. I think this was a Sega Genesis game called Zero Tolerance. If I have it, maybe I just have the loose card. Um, I had no idea this had a PS4 edition made. Uh, it's region 2, so I'm assuming it's European, but it doesn't have any of the standard European, like, mark... Oh, okay, it's all in German. I guess that would be a good sign, wouldn't it? But it doesn't It doesn't use, like, um, the USK system for ratings or anything, so I don't know. But anyway, yeah, it, it must have come from Germany, because the whole back's in German. Or maybe Austria? And that's... Either way, it, it's some sort of exclusive from Strictly Limited Games that uh, Lodmot sent to me. Why? Don't know. Lodmot's a little weird. <laughs> what can I say? But, but thank you very much, Lodmot. That was very nice of you to do. Wasn't expecting that. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's about all I have to say on that. So thank you very much, Lodmot. Uh, the last one up here is 
probably the strangest thing here, and it will seem at first like it has nothing to do with video games, but it really does. I'm going to show it to you first and then explain this because I don't know any other way to do this. Uh, so this comes from a guy, a buddy of mine named David Lee, okay? And I swear what you're about to see is going to come off weird, but let me explain this and why this is video game related. It's a, it's a pair of shorts by Nike. Okay, you were like, wait, what? what's happening right now? So this story is strange, but there they are. A pair of shorts, okay? Just, just hear me out. Um, so a few years ago, I went to E3, uh, and bef uh, I, was in, I was talked to by people at Aver Media. At the time, David was working for Aver Media, and uh, he, I guess he had been tasked with like giving me some promo stuff for from Aver Media. So like, uh, you know, I, I said, well, we, you know, if you're gonna be there, I guess we could just meet up and you can just hand me stuff rather than bothering to mail it. And he was like, yeah, that sounds fine. So he got together a little like press kit. I actually showed it to you guys at the time. It included things like a microphone, a, uh, a webcam, uh, a, like a, a Aver Media like live game reportable like recording device, like stuff like that. As well as like there was a water bottle and like a towel. It was just you know a press kit type of thing with a bunch of goodies. Um, so when I we figured out the meeting time, and this is where the story's going to sound very weird. It's going to get weird, weird, weird. Um, he was like, "Yeah, you can come meet me over at like the hotel." And I was like, "Okay, cool." I know what you're thinking. Like, "Oh, there's a hotel. The guys don't know each other. There's pants involved. What's going on here?" Just calm down. I know you're painting a picture. It's the wrong picture. Um, so he was like, "Come out to this hotel." And meet me there, and I'll, I'll give you the press kit. And I was like, all right, cool. So I go inside, and at the time, I'm standing there in the lobby. Uh, you have to understand that what's playing on the television in the background was the NBA Finals, the uh, Golden State Warriors then versus the Toronto Raptors. And so I kind of wanted to watch it because I hate the Warriors. I hate them. <laughs> I do not like them as a team. They're, they suck this year. Unfortunately, my Bulls suck too. But they suck, and it makes me happy. Whereas I like the Raptors quite a bit, so I was very happy for the Canadians when they ultimately won the title there. Right? Okay, so I kind of wanted to watch the game because it was like game six. It was like the fourth quarter, uh, and if the Warriors won that game, I believe they would have won the finals, but ultimately they I think they lost. I don't remember exactly the details. But it, was, it was an important game. That's all I remember. Um, and so David comes down, and we're kind of chatting about all this, and each one of us kind of independently is like, uh-huh, yeah. It, like, occasionally, like, looking back at the game. And then I think it was me who said, look, we both clearly want to watch this game. You want to just do that first, and then we'll, we'll talk about it? He's like, is that all right? I was like, yeah, that's totally right. Okay, cool. So we just sat there, and we watched the game. We're like, oh, like, we were, but he was a Warriors fan, so we were, like, totally on the opposite side of things, which tells you something, because we should have ended up hating each other, but we didn't. We ended up really liking each other. We thought we, it was pretty cool. So we're, we're watching the game. The game's over. Uh, I think the Warriors won that game, which extended the series or something like that. I don't remember exactly what the details were. But I know the, the, the Raptors didn't actually win the title in that moment. Um, but they did ultimately win the title. Anyway, so uh, after that, we were like, oh, so we kind of bonded over basketball, right? Uh, and as we're chatting, you know, we obviously talk about all the Aver Media stuff, but we ended up talking more about the NBA stuff. And he decides to, he didn't really know much about me, so he's just kind of picking my brain about, like, what, you know, my career, what have I done, blah, this, that, and that. And then, of course, I asked him the same thing. And he's like, well, my claim to fame is I partially created EA Sports. And I was like, you know, just kind of this look of what? And he's like, EA Sports now is not what I envisioned. <laughs> it turned into something that has nothing to do with what I originally thought of. Um, what I originally wanted was uh, sports figures to be associated with like kind of unrelated genres. Like it's not like you would, you know, a football game would actually be football. You know, it'd be like, you know, Brett Favre or whatever, and he's in an RPG or something like that. Okay, like that was the original idea. And he's like, we only made one game in that process and nobody remembers it. And I was like, Michael Jordan, Chaos in the Windy City. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, how did you know? I'm like, 
Because everybody remembers that. He's like, dude, I'm from Chicago. Like, of course I know that game. He's like, yeah, the problem was that game wasn't actually very good. Because it was Michael Jordan in a platform where we use, like, basketballs to attack stuff, right? And he's like, yeah, that nobody really remembers. That, that game didn't do all that well. Uh, it didn't even get a Genesis version that it was supposed to get. It only got the Super Nintendo release. And he's like, so the, the whole thing kind of died and it got absorbed into, like, normal sports games. Especially when all the hockey ones were doing really well, etc. So it just, it just kind of died right there. And I'm like, oh, that sucks. He's like, yeah, but he's like, but I got to meet Michael. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah. So he's like, back then, you know, I, I was responsible partially for the photo shoot. So, like, I had to be there. And so he actually showed me this photo of him when he was, I think he was in his 20s or 30s or something at that point. And he was like, so I, I got to be there. with, We got to meet Michael. And we did the whole photo shoot for all the assets for the manual, the cover, all that sort of stuff. And I was like, that's really cool. He's like, yeah. And so he's showing me this photo of him with Michael. And he's like, yeah, you see the shorts he's wearing in there? I still have those. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah. You want them? And I was like, excuse me? And he's like, yeah, I mean, he's like, they're not autographed or anything. The thing is that they were worn by Michael Jordan uh, for the photo shoot. So you can just have them. And I, at the time, I was like, no, nah, I can't accept that, you know. And it's been a few years. He randomly tweets at me the other day, and he's just like, yeah, if you still want these, like, I don't want them. I'll just send them to you. And this time I decided to accept it because I thought, well, okay, I'm, that's pretty neat, to be totally honest. So here's the story that he, uh, as it continues. He says that these might be the ones that are on the cover. So here's the deal. Back then, uh, as per the photo shoot, they, they got Michael a wardrobe. So they had a few different items. Like they, they had a couple of the white shirts. They had a couple of the black pants. They had two of each. And they were basically gave them to Jordan and said, like, put on whatever you want. And whatever's most comfortable for you, you wear. And you can use in the photo shoot. So he tried everything on. These were 100% worn by Michael Jordan. Um, but it was unclear if they were the ones that are actually on the box or not. So basically, they, they let him pick what he wanted. They do the photo shoot. He goes and changes, comes back in his normal clothes, hands them everything. Which ones? They had two of each. So he got to keep a pair, and this other lady got to keep a pair. There's a 50% chance these are the exact shorts on the cover of Michael Jordan, Chaos in the Windy City. There's a story I bet you didn't expect to hear today, did you? <laughs> but uh, even if they're not actually, there's no way to prove either way, unfortunately, because they, they literally just bought two pairs of the exact same thing. Um, but they definitely were worn by his heiress at one point. Um, cool. You know, if, not that I'll ever get the chance to meet him, but if I did... Hopefully I would for some reason have Michael Jordan's pants on me, which sounds strange again, and I'd be like, oh, autograph those. They were on the cover of a video game. <laughs> that would be cool. But um, yeah, so that's a strange little piece of video game history merch right there. What do you think of that? How did that make your day go? Um, so yeah, huge shout out to David there for that because I, I was kind of stunned that he felt like sending that my way. But I think the story itself is fascinating. Um, but yeah, very cool. Um, thank you to Lodmod, of course, for this. Thank you to Stone Age Gamer for all that stuff. Thank you to Retro Fighters. Thank you to Joseph Sunshine uh, Aldo, aka Thorhax of Japan. Thank you to nice people in Japan for just random things. Um, Thank you for my buddy Brian, and thank you guys for watching. As always, if you guys could do me a favor, please like this video, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't done that before, as well as check out all the social media stuff in the description, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, as well as the travel channel, Flying and Eating, where a lot of the stuff I've been describing to you, you will actually like see happen in videos. Uh, so hopefully you'll get a kick out of that, and it's got lots of travel tips for first time members going to Japan and all that sort of stuff. Uh, if you ever wanna see these places and understand what you're getting yourself in for, potentially, or just see what they're like, that's what the travel channel is because I get around. Um, so hopefully you guys will check that out. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all later.